All right, so I'm gonna go to my screen so we can start our notes. All right, so we're gonna pick up in the 8.5. Cause the main thing we did the other day, we just went through the definitions of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So we're still gonna talk about irrational functions. All right, so on this example, they want us to list the asymptotes. of the function, then graph the function. All right, so usually on these, I'm just gonna find my asymptotes and then I'm gonna show y'all how to actually put these in on those calculators and adjust your windows so that you can get the answers like they're getting. So my function is going to be f of x equals 5 divided by x squared minus 4. All right, so I'm going to start out finding my vertical asymptotes first, and then I'll get my horizontal asymptote. So to find the vertical asymptotes, we take the bottom and set it equal to 0. All right, now what I'm going to do, since that's quadratic, I'm going to use a quadratic formula where a will equal 1, b is 0, and then c is negative 4. So remember, your quadratics are always in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So whichever one's missing out of your polynomial is when it's going to be the zero, okay? All righty, so using the quad, let's turn that on, program quad, and enter, enter again. So let's put in a one, zero, and a negative four. Y'all want to do that, I get x equals two, and x equals negative two, those two answers would be my vertical asymptotes. Okay, so then I would find my horizontal asymptote next. So on a horizontal asymptote, we're going to compare the degree of the top to the degree of the bottom. So notice, there's no variable on top, so the degree on the top would be zero since there's no variable. The degree at the bottom, what well, the highest exponent on bottom is a two, so the degree of the bottom is a two, so the bottom would be greater than the top. So remember, when the, top, when the bottom has a higher degree than the top, the horizontal asymptote would be y equals zero. And y'all, that'll be every time the bottom has a higher degree, it's always going to equal to the zero on that, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to use is uh, use this calculator to graph that. So I'm going to go to y equals and clear that out. Now, I've only got a single term on top, so I don't need parentheses with that, so I'm going to punch my five. Now to get my fraction bar, I'm going to hit divide. And then the bottom, I'm going to put in parentheses because I got more than one part. So that'll be an x squared minus four. And then close parentheses. Now, let me show you another way. You could have done that. So I'm going to clear this out because some of y'all got this feature. I'm gonna hit alpha y, and I'm gonna hit enter on nd because that's numerator denominator form. And if I hit enter on that, I don't have to use parentheses because it's already in fraction form. So on this, I would put my five on top, 
and then on bottom do the x squared minus four. So some of y'all's calculators will let y'all do that fraction form by hitting the alpha button and the y equals. Now, on the graph here, notice their range is negative four to four on the x's and then negative five to five on the y values. So I'm gonna show y'all how to set the window. To set the window, you hit the window button, which is the second one on the top. Now my X minimum was negative four, so I'm gonna put a negative four in for that X minimum and then arrow down to the X maximum, which was a positive four. Then I'm gonna go down, don't worry about the scale. My Y minimum was negative five, so hit that, and then go to Y max and put a positive five. And then once again, I'm not worried about anything else being changed. So now that my window looks like the graph they gave me, I'm gonna hit enter and draw the graph. So if you'll notice here, you got the four pictures here. So you would just compare your graph with one of these and notice mine has an upside down U on the bottom on this. So the only choice I would have on this would be A if I was picking it on MATLAB, okay? Y'all telling me I'm unstable. Are y'all hearing me all right? I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Okay, good job. All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna go through and find some vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes real quick, and then we'll get back to graph and on one more at the end I got for y'all to graph. So on these examples, we're just gonna find the vertical asymptotes. Now we wanna put a star here before we start. If a factor on top matches any factors on the bottom, then that factor cancels that vertical asymptote. So what happens when you cancel a vertical asymptote, it just makes a hole in the graph instead of an actual asymptote there, okay? All right, so I just had to put more people in. So this first one, we're gonna have f of x, equals one over x minus one squared. All right, so remember to find the vertical asymptotes, I take the bottom and set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna take that x minus one squared and set it equal to zero. Now, since I'm solving this, I don't wanna foil that back all I wanna do is write this twice so that I get an x minus one, x minus one, all equal to zero. All right, y'all, so since these factors match, I'm only gonna solve it one time. Because remember, when it happens twice, it had a multiplicity of two, okay? So solve this by adding one to both sides and I get a vertical asymptote of x equals one. And then that'd be our final answer. All right, so the next one we'll have f of x is gonna equal x minus two over x squared plus six x. All right, so I'll keep admitting more people, so we're getting quite a bit now. 
All right, so once again, take the bottom, we're finding vertical asymptotes and set that equal to zero. So x squared plus six x equals zero. And y'all, once again, I'm gonna use the quad. So I'm gonna use my quad formula. On this one, A would be one, B would be six, and C would be zero. So notice this time you do have the X term, so that's gonna give you the six, but you don't have a number at the end, so that's gonna give you the zero. If you put that into the quad, so second quit that, program quad, enter and enter again. So on that one, I put a one for my A, six for my B, zero for my C, and I get X equals zero, X equals negative six. And then notice on this one, the only factor was X minus two. If you were to solve that, that would have gave you a positive two and two does not cancel with the zero and negative six. So our final answers would be both. All right, so let me get one right here. F of X equals X squared plus five X minus 14 over X squared minus two X minus eight. So once again, I'm gonna take the bottom and set it equal to that zero. So we're gonna quad this. So A will be one, B will be negative two, C will be negative eight. All right, so let me enter that. So enter on my quad, one for the A, negative two for the B, negative eight for the C, and I get X equals four and X equals negative two. Now y'all, this one on top, I'm gonna quad that real quick just to see what kind of answers it has. Because if I get an answer from the top that matches one of these on the bottom, I gotta cancel it. So I'm just gonna try the top and see what I get. I got a one, five, and a negative 14. So notice that gave me a positive two and a negative seven, but I needed a negative two and a positive four. So since that, them two numbers on that didn't match these two numbers, we're gonna keep both answers. Okay. Oh, don't worry, I got one that cancels so that y'all can see that happening. All right, so here's the last one of these uh, verticals and then we'll move into our horizontals. So this time I got G of X equals X to the third over five X to the third minus a X squared minus six X. So once again, let's take our bottom, set it equal to zero. So y'all, this is not quadratic yet because we got X's in every one of these terms and our exponent's too high. So the first thing you wanna do is factor out one of those X's. If you factor out an X, all three of these terms will lose one X each so that you have a five X squared minus one X minus six, all equal to zero. All right, so now this X, we're just gonna leave it alone. Right now, what we wanna do, since this part's quadratic, I'm gonna use the quad formula for this part. A equals five, B equals negative one, C equals negative six. So let me punch them numbers in. Five, negative one, 
negative six. So I don't want that decimal, so I'm gonna hit enter one more time, and I get x is a six fifths, x is a negative one. Now this GCF we factored out here is gonna give me x equals zero. So the GCF will always give you zero. But y'all look at the top. You got an x to the third up there. If you was to set x to the third equals zero, well, the only number you can cube and get a zero would be a zero. So now you see, I got a factor on top that matches one of my factors on the bottom. That means I got to cancel out that asymptote. So that the only two asymptotes would be the x equals six fifths and the x equals negative one. And in fact, you could tell that because what's every one of these got in them, an x? So that one x would cancel out of everybody, which was canceling out that, you know, that, uh, that asymptote, okay? All right, so that's the only one that's gonna be tricky. And I think it's like number 10 on y'all's homework. All right, anyone still writing that? All right, so I'm going to flip over. We're going to find horizontal asymptotes. All right, so I got f of x is going to equal 3x to the fourth plus 4 over 7x to the fourth minus 2. So what you want to look at is the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. And see which one's bigger, smaller, or equal. So let's see, the degree of the top is a 4. The degree of the bottom is a four. So these degrees are equal. So we said when you had equal degrees, the horizontal asymptote depended on A over B. A is the lead coefficient on top. Well, y'all, the lead coefficient on top is a three. B was the lead coefficient of the bottom. Well, the lead coefficient on bottom is a seven. So my final answer is y equals three over seven. So when the top degree equals the bottom degree, you look at the numbers in front and that gives you your horizontal asymptote. All right, how about an x squared minus nine over five x to the six plus five. So once again, I'm gonna compare my degree. All right, so let's see, the top degree looks like a two. The bottom degree is a six. So the bottom degree is bigger than the top. Now, had they been equal, the lead coefficient on top would have been a one for that one, okay, since there's no number there. But these ones weren't equal, so remember, if the top is smaller than the bottom, automatically your, your uh, horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero. All right, so I'm gonna do one more of those and then we'll play with a nice graph. So this one has x to the third minus five x squared plus a x minus three divided by x squared minus 14. All right, so let's look at our degree of our top and then the degree of the bottom. So the degree on top is gonna to be the three. 
degree of the bottom will be the two. So this time the top has a higher degree than the bottom. So we said the other day when the top had a higher degree than the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so there are only three cases. They're equal, look at the numbers in the front. The bottom is bigger, it's always gonna be y equals zero. And if the top is bigger, it's always gonna be no horizontal asymptote, okay? So really the only one that needs any work is when they're equal. All right, y'all, anybody writing about the flipper over, right? Okay, I'll let you. One second. Okay, I'll get you, you're there. I need a drink. Okay, so when the degree on top is smaller than the one on the bottom, is that right? It equals zero? It says degree on top oh, greater than degree on bottom. Okay. okay. So now we're going to put it all together on this example. Okay. On this example, we're going to list the domain. We're going to find the X and Y intercepts, the asymptotes, and graph. So they're giving me F of X equals X plus seven over X squared minus 49. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my domain. And remember, to find a domain, I take the bottom, set it equal to zero. And y'all, if you want to, you can use quad on that. A would be one. B would be zero and C would be negative 49. All right, so if you solve that on quad or factoring it or even square roots, you would get X equals seven, X equals negative seven. So that my domain starts at negative infinity and it goes until I hit negative seven. At negative seven, I'm going to union around. From negative seven, it goes until it hits that positive seven. And then I'm going to union around that positive seven. And then from that positive seven, it heads off towards positive infinity. All right, so since I'm doing an x-intercept, so I'll put that right here, x-intercept. The first thing I'm going to do is take that x plus 7 and set it equal to 0. So to find an x-intercept, you take the top, set it equal to 0. In solving that, I would subtract 7, and I get x equals a negative 7. But y'all remember, since I got a negative 7 on top, look what my bottom gave me. It also gave me a negative 7, right? So since you got a negative seven on top that matches the negative seven on bottom, we're gonna cancel those two out, which means it has no x-intercept. So if the x-intercept cancels with one of them bottom factors, 
you will not have an x intercept. Now, to find the y intercept, you find f of zero. So to find f of zero, you're going to put a zero into this original equation. So you get zero plus seven over zero squared minus 49. And y'all, the reason y'all are learning all this is so if y'all ever had to graph one of these, you would know what sort of to put on there. So let's see what I get on top. I get a seven. On bottom, zero squared is zero minus 49 is a negative 49. But that will reduce to a negative, let's see, one over seven. So I just divided both of them by that seven. So that your y-intercept is zero, comma, negative one seven. All right, no x-intercept. That means it does not cross the x-axis, but it does have a y-intercept at negative one seven. Now, I'm gonna find my vertical axis. So, so the domain, sorry, the domain is always the bottom equal to zero. Equal to zero. And the x-intercept is top equal to zero. Exactly. Y-intercept is always f of zero f of zero okay now what's nice since we did the domain already we already did the work we needed for the vertical asymptotes they're going to be x equals seven and x equals negative seven but remember we canceled out the negative seven with the top so the only vertical asymptote we will have is x equals positive seven Now, we're going to look at our horizontal asymptote. So y'all, is my degree on top bigger than the degree on the bottom, equal or less than? So let's see, on top you got no exponent, so that would be like a one. On bottom, you got a two. So it looks like the bottom is bigger than the top. So since that bottom is bigger, this goes to y equals zero. Okay. So now I'm ready to graph this for you. And I'm actually gonna graph it by hand and show you what I would do. And then I'll show you on that calculator. So let me move this over here so I can put my graph paper there. So let me draw me a graph. So let me see, I'm gonna go by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm just gonna number mine to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, negative 10, positive 10. And then negative 10 this way. So my Y axis, and my X. All righty, so the first thing I would draw is those vertical asymptotes. Well, the only vertical asymptote I had is at X equals seven, so let's go find seven. So since seven is here, we're gonna draw a vertical dotted line. And my graph cannot go across this vertical dotted line, okay? It can get really close, but it will not cross over. So now, let's see what else we know. So we're not worried about the horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal just tells me what's going to happen as it comes out those X's. I had no X-intercept, so it does not cross over the X-axis at all. But we do know our Y-intercept. Our Y-intercept is zero, negative one sevenths. So y'all, negative one sevenths is really small, so it should be about right here. 
not quite down to that negative one. Hell, it's almost close to that zero, okay? So watch this. It cannot cross the x-axis, so this side is going to head towards our asymptote and come down, but it never can cross over that dotted line. Now, we said we had horizontal asymptotes of y equals zero. Well, y equals zero is the x-axis, which means this side is just going to come up, try to get to the zero, but it never can, and it's just going to keep going out that way. Now, I don't know what's happening on that right side, so I might would um, throw another value in there just to see which way our graph's going to go. So let's put a 10 into this equation and see what we get. So I'm going to find f of 10 just to see what's happening on that side. This is to see if it's going to be positive or negative, okay? So that'll be 10 plus 7 over 10 squared minus 49. So let's see, 10 plus 7 will give me 17. 10 squared is 100 minus 49. So what's that? Give me 51. And I think that'll reduce. Let's see. 17 divided by 51.333, which is one third. So that's telling me at 10, it's going to be at a third right in here. Now remember, on this side, it's going to try to get down to that zero because of that horizontal asymptote. So this side is going to come in from here. It's going to come down and it's going to try to get near that zero, but it never can. Now, y'all had that been a negative uh, one third when I figured that out, it would have came up from this end and went to the negative numbers. Okay. So a lot of fun. So if you did that by hand on your calculator, what we would do would go to y equals, let me clear that one out. So on top you would put x plus seven, close parentheses, divided by parentheses, x squared minus 49, close parentheses. Now remember, if you got that where you can do the alpha y and you can put it in just like the fraction looks that way, okay? All righty, so notice my windows are negative 10 and 10, so I'm just going to hit zoom six to get my screen on a 10 by 10 window. And y'all, there we go. There's that side coming down. There's my asymptote. It didn't really put a line there. And then the other side was above the y, the um, x-axis. Whoo, so not too bad, are they? Thank God for calculators, right? Yes. All righty, so let me get my screen back. Period. Y'all had that graph done, right? All right, now, 8.6. And this is the last section in the third test range. So this will be polynomial inequalities. So we'll finish these today. So that looks like Monday we might be reviewing for y'all's next test. All right, so we're going to be putting our answers in interval notation. So once again, remember, if you got equal signs under those inequalities, you have to use the brackets. If it's just a greater than or a less than, you have to use the parentheses on these, okay? 
So, we're just going to walk through one of these. X minus 3 times X plus 4 has to be less than 0. So what I'm going to do, since I've already got a 0 on the right side, I'm going to take both my factors and set them equal to 0 and solve them. And then we don't even have to worry about it being less than or greater than at this point, because we're going to test numbers in a second. Um, so to solve both of these, add 3 to the first one, and then subtract 4 from the second one. And if you notice, it's always true that your answers are always opposite signs than the factors were. But y'all, what we're going to do now, we're going to set up a testing interval. So to set up my testing interval, I'm just going to draw me a number line. And I'm going to put my two numbers. I know negative 4 will be on the left side, and positive 3 will be somewhere on that right side. So what I do is I got to find a number that I can test in my intervals, okay, to see if these are true and false. So let me show y'all how these are going to shade when we're done. So let me draw two of these. All right, y'all, if it shades in the middle on these, it's only going to shade in the middle. If it shades on this first part right here, before the A, then it automatically will shade after the B. So to see what I'm going to shade, I'm going to test zero. Because y'all agree, zero is in between that negative four and three, right? And zero is the easiest number to test. So I'm going to test zero because I know it's right there. If it's true, I'm going to shade the middle. If it's false, I'm not going to shade the middle, and I'm only going to shade the outsides. So let's test the zero by putting a zero in for those x's. So zero minus three would give me a negative three times four has to be less than zero. Well, let's see, negative 3 times 4 gives me a negative 12, less than 0. That is true. So since it's true, we're going to shade where the 0 was. So I'm going to draw my little line again for you. My negative 4 was here. My 3 was there. So since 0 was in the middle, I'm going to shade that middle in between the negative 4 and 3. So now we're going to write our answer in interval notation. There's not no equals under that. So since there's no equals, we're going to use parentheses. So the shaded area represents from negative 4 to positive 3, and we're done. So if you shade the middle, there's never any unions. It's just one little set of intervals, OK? All right, I'm going to give you all a second to write that. And while you're writing, I'm actually going to grab that and show you all how you can do these on the calculator. So let me turn this on, go to y equals, and clear that. And I'm just going to put in that x minus 3 parentheses and then the x plus 4 parentheses. Now, I don't have to worry about the 0. Now, I'm going to graph it. And since it's less than 0, I'm looking for whatever answer is under the x-axis. And if you can tell, this part right here is all under the x-axis. Well, that starts underneath at an x well, negative 4 there, it's underneath until you hit this x, which was 3. All right, y'all, next one.
And this section is pretty small. I think there's like six or seven questions is all. All right, x squared minus 13x plus 22 has to be greater than zero. So if you graph this and you're looking for whatever answer is above the x-axis, because it's greater than. All right, y'all, we're going to use the quad. A equals 1, B equals negative 13, C equals 22. That's going to give me two answers. So if y'all quoted that, you should get X equals a positive 11 and X equals a positive 2. So now I'm going to set up my interval. So let's see, 2 is about right here. And then 11 is over here. So if I'm going to test zero, zero is in the first section because it's before that two, okay? Now, if you want a number in between, you can start with a three, four, five, any number, but that wouldn't be hard. It, that would be a lot harder to use than a zero, okay? Now, watch this. If the zero is true, I'm going to shade that section to zeros in. But since I shaded the first section, I would have to automatically come over and shade that last section. If it's false here, then the only section I will shade is the middle section. So it's either the middle or the outsides. All right, so to test zero, we're going to put a zero in. So I got zero squared minus 13 times zero plus 22 has to be greater than zero. So let's see what happens. That's going to give me a zero. 13 times zero is going to give me a zero. So mainly, I need to know is 22 greater than zero, true or false? And that is definitely true. So let me redraw my line for you and put my two here in my, whoops, my 11 right there. So since zero was true and zero was in the first section, I'm going to shade my first section. But I automatically got to shade my last section. So if you shade the first section, you automatically shade the last. Okay, so watch this, interval notation. This thing's heading way out to negative infinity that way. It's heading out to positive infinity that way. So for interval notation, we want to start at negative infinity. And we're shaded until we hit the 2. There's no equals under my inequality, so I'm going to use parentheses. And then we're going to union that from where this side starts. Well, this side starts at 11. And like I said, it's headed out towards positive infinity. So you cannot include the 2 through 11 because they made this false. All right, so I'll let y'all have a second to write that one down. All right, y'all, my next one. So I'm going to try to, these last three or four will have just little tricks they're doing to them. Here's a x squared minus 4x minus 22 is greater than or equal to a x minus 8. So the first thing we need is a zero on the right side. So what we need to do is bring the x over by subtracting it and make that negative 8, positive 8 on both sides. So we're going to subtract an x from both sides and add an 8. 
So let's see, that brings down to x squared. Negative four, negative one, give me negative five x's. Negative 22, positive eight, give me what a negative uh, 14. All that has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now we got everything on one side. Now we can use the quad to solve this. A is one, B is negative five, C is a negative 14. So if you quoted that, you would actually get a positive seven and a negative two. So y'all now we're gonna what? Set up our number line. So let's see, negative two would happen first. So it's gonna to be to the left. And then over here somewhere would be my seven. We're gonna test zero again. And once again, zero will be in between my two numbers. So true, I'll shade it. False, I'll shade the outsides. So now I'm gonna use the one we rewrote cause it's got everything on one side with a zero. So I'm gonna do zero squared minus five times zero minus 14 has to be greater than or equal to zero. So y'all, let's see, that's a zero. Negative five times zero is zero. So basically, is negative 14 greater than or equal to zero, true or false? And that would definitely be false. So since that's false, we cannot shade where zero was. which means I shade everywhere else, which is the first section and the last section. Now let's play a interval notation. So we're starting at negative infinity on this one. We go until we hit that negative two, but y'all watch out, this one does have some equal signs under those inequalities up here. So since there's equal signs, we got to use our brackets. And then that'll union from this bracket from the seven until I hit positive infinity. All right, so I'm gonna turn over. All right, y'all, how about an X squared greater than 64? So I tell you, I'm just gonna minus 64 so I can get my zero there. So that this gives me a X squared minus 64 is greater than zero. Cause now at this point I can use the quad. A is one, B is zero, and C would be negative 64. All right, if you quanted that, that would give you a eight, and a negative eight. So let's set up our intervals. So over here will be a negative eight somewhere. There's gonna be a positive eight, which means once again, when I test zero, it's gonna be right in the middle. So true, we shade that. False, we shade the outsides. So I'm gonna put a zero in, so zero squared, minus 64 has to be greater than zero. Well, that's gonna give me a zero, so all that's left is a negative 64 greater than zero. That is definitely false. So, since it's false, we cannot shade the middle where the zero was, so we gotta shade 
the outsides. So that this interval comes in from negative infinity, goes up to the negative eight. There's no equals, so we use parentheses. And in union from that positive eight to that positive infinity. So that almost looks like a bracket, but that's a parenthesis, okay? All right, y'all, this one has 2x minus 1 minus x squared is less than 0. So what I'm going to do is get everything in order. So a negative x squared plus 2x minus 1 less than 0. You got to have these in the right order when you do your quad. And then quad will be a is negative 1, b is 2, and c is a negative one. So let's quad that and see what that does. So I'm gonna go to program quad, enter, enter. So I got a negative one, two, and a negative one. Oh, look at that, I get x equals one, x equals one. So since I got a repeating answer, and this had a multiplicity two, basically, you're only going to exclude the one number. So only exclude the one number from the domain. So since I'm only excluding the one number, I'm gonna go from negative infinity until I hit that one, parentheses, and then union from that one to positive infinity. So when you get the repeating number, remember, that's the only number we are gonna exclude from the domain and be done with it. I'm gonna give you all a second to write that and then we only got one more problem left. Hey y'all, John John on here, is that Jonathan Simmons? Yes, sir, live and well. All righty, I just had to put your mark, mark you on this thing. Thank you, kind sir. All righty, so let's knock out that last one and we'll be done. So this one, and this is another special type problem, has an X squared plus 16 less than 6x. So we need a zero over here. So I'm going to subtract the 6x from both sides. And none of these are like terms, so I'm just going to put them in the order they need to be. They need to be at x squared minus the 6x plus 16 less than zero. All right, so the quad, you'd be A equals one, B equals negative six, C equals 16. So let's see what the quad's gonna do to that. So one, negative six, and 16. Oh, y'all look, we're getting imaginary answers, which means you cannot factor that. This is not factorable and we can't have imaginary answers or radical answers. So since this is not factorable with real numbers, this is gonna give me what we call a empty set or no solution. 
And that's because, so we'll put uh, because the polynomial is not solvable for our real numbers. or rational numbers. Which means if you do quad and you get any kind of radical, that means it's a no solution on that and you're done. Now, let me show you why it's a no solution if y'all was to graph that. So let me go to my y equals, clear that out. And I'm gonna put in the x squared minus six x plus 16. Because remember, this is saying it's got to be less than zero, but y'all, if you graph it, everything's above the zero, right? Everything's up here. That's why there's no solution, because you don't have any part of your graph that's below that x-axis where the zeros are, okay? So you can graph them. Now, greater than, it would work for all real numbers, because the whole graph is above, okay? So, um, let me, y'all still writing? No, so I'll stop that. Oh, good. <laughs> so what'll happen, y'all try to catch up to eight, six, and then Monday, I'm gonna go over to study guide with you. Um, So like I said, I'll go over to study guide with y'all Tuesday. Um, well, these will probably be take home tests anyway online. So yeah, we'll see how we do Tuesday. If we don't get everything done Tuesday, we'll have to review Thursday. So let's just see how y'all do and how we're looking on, uh, I mean, Monday, okay? We're Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, I keep messing y'all up. So everything I say, if it's Tuesday, means Monday for y'all, right? <laughs> May you send me this video? Oh, yeah, I'm going to send these videos. Um, I'm about to stop recording this. And then I'm going to give y'all a break. And then we'll do our lab part. And then after I do the lab, I'll be able to upload it and send it.